Actor Murray Bartlett never expected to be a rising star at age 50, but he's certainly enjoying the surprise. The Australian actor started working in the field back in 1987, and while he has landed many projects throughout his on-screen career and has been steadily working, there were no huge roles that broke him onto the scene. Then came the White Lotus. Thanks to portraying the high, strong, and entertaining hotel manager Armand on season one of the hit HBO series, Murray rose to fame and is in high demand these days. Considering his amazing performance as this character alone, it appears Bartlett had been so underused for most of his acting career and is now making up for it. We can also catch Murray Bartlett as Vinny, an 80s fitness instructor on Apple TV Plus's Physical, and on the Hulu series Welcome to Chip and Dales, based on the true story, in another leading role as Nick Denoya. The seasoned actor's big break has unlikely origins, especially since it mostly happened during the pandemic era, and there's a lot to Murray's story I'm sure you don't know. We'll tell you all about that in this video and much more here for you on Famous Life. Murray Bartlett was born on March 20th, 1971 in Sydney, Australia. While we don't know much about his parents, we do know his mother Anne has been pivotal throughout his entire life and career and has always supported him. While Murray was born in Sydney, he and his family moved to Perth when he was four years old, which was where he was raised. He has always claimed he was very lucky and very loved, especially by his mum. He said that she made me feel as if I could be whoever I wanted to be. Murray came out as gay to her early on and it was never an issue. He also has said she had plenty of gay friends so he had a handful of role models himself. This likely also assisted Murray in being able to be himself in his acting roles and truly come into his own. While coming out to his mother was quote unquote very easy, coming out to his father was, according to Murray, a little more complex because he has religious beliefs that don't, that struggle with people being gay. So that was a challenge. And when he was asked if his father has come to accept that his son is gay, Murray answered explaining, he loves me, I know that, and I love him. I think it's a tricky thing to come to some peace and acceptance of other people's differing views of the world or their belief system without backing down from what I believe. Murray first discovered his love for performing when he was merely a child after his older brother knocked out two of his front teeth with a hammer. At the time, a group of kids were gathered around a spider and his brother swung back a hammer to squash it and you can guess what happened next. Murray lost two more front teeth not long afterwards by spinning around in the basement in a blanket to music, according to his mom. Mom. Murray waited years for his adult teeth to come back in, and when they finally did, he needed to take speech therapy since he had difficulty pronouncing the letter S. Murray's therapist gave him poems and monologues to read aloud to assist him, which he absolutely loved. He had a grand imagination, and falling in love with acting was a natural choice for him. He said, I lived in my imagination. I would dress up in weird clothes and wander around the yard like I was in an imaginary world. The inspiration he found triggered him to stay with the same speech therapist for years, and his passion on the stage only grew. After theater camps, acting schools, and auditions, Murray's path to his future career began to form. He attended school at John Curtin College of the Arts in Fremantle, and he graduated from the drama program there in 1988. When he graduated, he was accepted to the National Institute of Dramatic Art in Sydney. His mom said about this accomplishment, he applied in year 12 to go to NIDA, and he was the only person from Western Australia chosen that year to go. He was only 17. They didn't really like taking them so young, but they thought he was good enough. So it was certainly no small feat, and Murray's talent was clear as day. Prior to this, Murray also landed his first guest role on an Australian TV show, The Flying Doctors, when he was 16. He didn't think he excelled quite yet though and revealed about this. I don't think I was very good. I was terrified when I first started in TV. It was a very intense time. Murray was always more comfortable on stage and working in theater, but decided that pushing himself and continuing with acting school was the thing to do. However, the entertainment industry in Australia didn't always give him confidence as it felt small and there was usually a lot of long breaks between landing any work. Regardless, Murray persevered and continued acting in his home country, landing a role on the series Headland and then in 1993, he played con man Luke Foster in Neighbours. Either way, at times Murray did wonder if he should continue on. He said, it's not that I haven't thought about giving up because we all have existential crises along the way but acting seemed like a natural thing for me. In one of those pivotal moments, Murray took a break and gave himself two options, to go to New Zealand for a 10-day wilderness walk or move to New York City and take acting classes. Well, he chose the latter, moving in 2000 to the US. 
He said, I chose New York and fell in love with the stimulating environment, and thankfully was the right choice as Murray soon booked a pretty impressive role. Thanks to a friend of a friend, he scored an audition for one of the biggest TV shows at the time, Sex in the City. He was a guest star on the series in the role of Oliver Spencer, a shoe distributor, a slightly fickle man about town, and hot new friend to lead character, Carrie, played by Sarah Jessica Parker. Murray also played DK in four episodes of the sci-fi channel show Farscape, and in 2006, he returned to theater and toured with Hugh Jackman in the Australian touring company production of Jackman's Broadway hit, The Boy From Oz. In 2007, he was cast on the CBS soap opera Guiding Light as Cyrus Foley and he would remain on the series until its cancellation in 2009. Sometime after this, Murray went on to play two high-profile gay TV characters, the first of which was Dominic Dom Bazaluzo in the HBO show Looking in 2014, also reprising the role in the series finale TV movie in 2016. Then, the next role was a recurring one as Michael Mouse Tolliver in the Netflix revival of Tales of the city in 2019. As we all know, soon after the pandemic era came upon us, and it was then that Murray reportedly started to wonder if he would even work as an actor again. Not long before the pandemic ensued, he moved from New York City to Provincetown, Massachusetts, which also had Murray wondering if that would affect his potential to work. The actor had lived in Brooklyn for 17 years, but moving to Massachusetts ended up being the best decision, as he still lives there with his partner Matt and their rescue dog Bo to this day. During these uncertain times, Murray's biggest role thus far ended up coming along when he would be cast to play outlandish luxury hotel manager Armand, who poos in the suitcase of an obnoxious and spoiled guest on HBO's The White Lotus. Murray certainly didn't expect this career breakout at his current age and definitely not in the middle of a worldwide lockdown, but that's exactly what happened. When speaking about getting his role on the show in the first place, Murray said it was a very weird, specifically pandemic experience. After one self-tape, the show's creator Mike White invited him to the shoot location of Hawaii. Murray figured, why wouldn't you take a leap with someone like Mike White? Then on the plane, he read the rest of the script and discovered his character Armand's full arc, which he found quote-unquote daunting in a great way. This crazy character who Murray portrayed was not only the manager of the White Lotus Resort, but also a gay recovering drug addict who was quote-unquote clean for five years. He became a definite fan favorite to view viewers of the show, and Murray simply nailed it. Not to mention, he adored playing this wild role. He said about playing Armand, Nothing really prepares you for a moment like that. This character fully follows through in their intention, and that's just a beautiful thing to play as an actor, even if it does mean shitting in a suitcase. He also loved the writing, the cast, and the entire experience of filming The White Lotus. For his portrayal of the character, he received multiple nominations and ended up winning awards at the AACTA Awards. Awards, Critics' Choice Television Awards and Primetime Emmy Awards. Murray said about having this career breakthrough at the age of 50 that one of the wonderful things about an experience like that happening at my age is I'm very aware of the ebb and flow of things. I'm much more able to fully be in this moment and enjoy it without stressing out too much. Once you get to a certain age, you're like, well, I've got nothing left to lose, so I might as well just fully lean into this and love the hell out of it. After succeeding in this gig, a year after The White Lotus wrapped, Murray Murray was in the second season of Apple TV Plus Physical alongside fellow Australian actress Rose Byrne. On this show, Murray plays Vinnie Green, a health and fitness guru who seems to be everything frustrated 80s housewife Sheila, played by Byrne, once in life. You can also catch Murray in the Hulu show Welcome to Chippendales as one of the lead roles as Nick DeNoya, a choreographer who helps take the production to the next level. And this series is based on the true origin story of the Chippendales stripper troupe. For this, he stars alongside Kumail Nanjiani, Andrew Rennells, Dan Stevens, and Juliette Lewis. Basically, Murray has a lot on his plates, and in addition to these series, he is set to appear in the Meryl Streep-led Extrapolations, which depicts the climate emergency through multiple shifting perspectives. He's also going to star in The Last of Us based on the post-apocalyptic video game of the same name. Murray Bartlett has also been in New Jersey working on an indie film and has a few other projects bubbling away. So 2023 is said to be another good one for the actor and we can't wait to see what's next for him. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Famous Life and leave a comment for who you'd like us to feature next.